Well, hello. Here's a, an important and current question. Is Putin finished? Uh, the war on the Ukraine has created a dangerous and volatile situation. I guess we can all agree on that. And as the world has watched it play out, there has been unprecedented unity among the countries of the West and in the severity of the uh, sanctions that have been imposed upon Russia. Putin has clearly misjudged the West on this, and, uh, and it's thus a big problem for Russia. And the responsibility for it clearly comes back to him personally. So can he survive it, or will this be the end of him? Well, there are unsurprisingly uh, different views, and I look at them. First of all, what about the, those who say, uh, yes, yes, he is finished? Well, remember Bill Clinton in one of his election campaigns famously said, it's the economy, stupid. History repeatedly reminds us that regimes depend upon people having enough to eat and to be able to buy what they want to buy. And when that's threatened, their rulers are in trouble. Uh, Putin's early popularity was tied to oil price prosperity. That was going really well. But Western sanctions now at an unprecedented level have reversed that. A failing economy wrecks government finance and stimulates public unrest. And these problems are now unfixable with uh, Russians foreign reserve, which was the usual solution to such problems, because they're now frozen. And, and that also reduces Russia's ability to defend the ruble. The ruble's collapsing. Now, what about a low ruble? Well, that means a drop in the standard of living for the average Russian, still reliant on many imported goods. So the, the prices of those items are beginning to skyrocket. Foreign travel's more expensive as their rubles buy less currency abroad. They're just not going to be happy. In an open letter, a group of emigre Russian economists urged Putin to stop the war immediately. Here's what they said. Uh, we can predict with complete certainty uh, the most serious negative consequences for the Russian economy, rising prices, falling incomes and investments, depreciation of savings, further cuts in social spending, and the accelerating loss of human capital due to emigration. Phew, oh, that's big trouble coming from that. And there's the use of mercenaries just reported. Uh, and that demonstrates the surprising weakness of the army. So he's had to rely on missiles and other heavy weapons to win his war in the Ukraine. Uh, that's really a sign of weakness that he has to do it that way. The articulate uh, American general and former CIA head David Petraeus predicted that ongoing resistance from the Ukraine is probably his biggest nightmare. It's, like, it's likely to be like the Afghanistan humiliation. Guerrilla tactics will persist and they'll be virtually impossible to stop. It's going to be a tough next few years for him. And the reality of Slav killing Slav must be causing consternation and alienation to the people, troops and civilians alike. Uh, Russian people are romantics at heart and they identify strongly with their racial and ethnic origins. Uh, for that matter, who doesn't? Uh, so it's a big personal problem for them to have to be killing people that are a lot like them. Uh, his uniting of NATO is one of the greatest surprises in this entire adventure. And it, and it must be sowing seeds of doubt among the top team at the Kremlin about his leadership. In the final analysis, for him to survive, he needs their support. The Western press is now raising serious questions about his health, noting his bloated appearance and his occasional rambling speech. Um, if he really is uh, very sick, he'll be worrying about his legacy more than ever, and that, that could affect his mental stability. Oh, dear me, uh, shades of Henry VIII, uh, who, as we all know, became quite ill as a result of a sporting injury, falling on his head uh, off of a horse. And ever after that, he behaved like a psychopathic monster. So, so uh, these sort of difficulties can make people even more extreme uh, for the worse. <laughs> 
So with all that's going wrong for him, it's hard to imagine his survival, at, at least in the longer term. Uh, the bottom line is, uh, and they're going to have to admit it at some point, he is failing as his nation's leader. Well, what about those who say, no, no, Putin's not finished? Look, he has loyal lieutenants. Um, I'm sure that he has taken steps to enrich, protect, and contaminate them uh, with responsibility for his various crimes so that they will fear regime change. Um, it worked for quite a long time for Gaddafi and for Saddam Hussein. It's still doing the job pretty well for Kim Jong-un. Um, so that's a way that you stay in office, uh, looking after the boys. He has loyal security services, and he'll know how to keep them on site. After all, he knows the spy business better than most, uh, given that that's where much of his career was spent. Uh, he's effectively muzzled the media. Apparently, from what we read in the newspapers, they must now confine their, confine their news gathering to official government sources of information. Um, anybody who disobeys that will probably just disappear, just like it was in the good old days of the Soviet Union. Pretty, uh, pretty rough atmosphere for, for journalists. And the street protests that we hear about from time to time are, are hardly on a scale that can't be controlled. The, the Russians are good at, at, uh, good at that, <laughs> good at controlling any kind of protest. And he's firmly entrenched as a leader. It's, it's hard to remember a time before Putin, uh, who, by the way, recently signed a law that allows him to run for the presidency twice more in his lifetime, potentially keeping him in office until uh, 2036. So that would be, my, by my calculation, until he's about 83 or 84. So no problem. He's there to stay. Well, uh, what's my take on all of this? Well, it's pretty obvious to me that Putin is trapped in the old Soviet view. He's yearning to return to the good old days. And as one of the famous outspoken dissidents said, he's an old man in a bunker. And that means that unfortunately he won't back off, especially if his health is failing and he starts becoming really obsessed with his legacy. So as I see it, there are two likely scenarios, both terminal for him. Uh, one is that he doubles down on aggression, threatens to use nuclear weapons, or uses unacceptable force in the Ukraine to finish the job. Perhaps even finds himself on the receiving end of a war crimes arrest warrant from the International Criminal Court. Uh, he gets, uh, if that happens, he maybe he gets replaced by cooler heads, sort of the way Khrushchev was. Or another one, there develops massive uh, rioting and migration, brings down the whole government, complete with Kremlin infighting and violence. Oh, dear. Uh, so I do conclude that he's finished in the near to medium term and that the process is not going to be a pretty one. So that's what I think. Uh, if you liked it, please do the usual. Give me a like, subscribe, comment notify and i'll see you at the next one thanks a lot bye bye